Hello and welcome to the Rupert Friend Show. I'm hoping that you've seen the finale of Homeland if you're in Europe. Sorry that you haven't, but you probably will. If you haven't seen it, you don't want to be watching this. Uh, change the channel, go to another window, um, because this is spoiler central. So please turn off your computer now. You've been told lots of times to so don't complain about all the spoilers that are coming up about the Homeland finale here. Um, right, so what are we starting with? So I'm, I'm here to ask, answer and ask any questions from you guys. Um, it was a, a big day yesterday for all of us and it's actually the first and only episode that I uh, watched. Amy and I watched it live. Um, we thought it was important to do that and um, so I'm imagining there's a few questions from you all and um, let's uh, see what you said. So the first one comes from Courtney and Courtney asks, uh, Hi Rupert, this season marked a drastic shift for Quinn as a character. How did you react when you first read the season finale script? Um, well obviously the first thing is that I didn't believe it because as we all know uh, Quinn's been through quite a lot this season and um, you know he was supposed to die last season in the hospital in Berlin and uh, you know was given a kind of another lease of life um, so how did I react I thought by that point um, we'd seen this poor guy go through so much and I felt um, there was a sense of peace that I felt, I think, um, on his behalf. There's an ambiguity that I like uh, in the finale last night. Um, the idea that uh, perhaps, you know, did Quinn know that he was going to commit this act of sacrifice or did he believe he was going to get out alive and it came as a surprise? And I think that... Um, that ambiguity is very, very interesting, and I'd, I'd be very interested to hear what you guys all thought. Um, so next question uh, from Anna, who asks, Rupert, you seem at peace with Quinn's death. Is this how you always envisioned Quinn's end? In your eyes, was Quinn also at peace when he made his decision? And this kind of plays into what I just said in a way, which is, you know, whether we think that... Uh, Quinn realized on the exit from the garage that, that this was it, that there's no way to survive that kind of gauntlet, or whether um, there was a kind of last chance, hurrah, immortality moment, I'm not sure. Um, but we do have a clip uh, from the end of episode 11, uh, the moment where Quinn tells Carrie to let him go, which, you know, it's not the first time he's said that to Carrie, but it may be the first time that he's... Um, beginning to come to terms with um, something of his destiny, potentially, but we can look at that now. You gotta let me go. <clears throat> Which she does. Um, and we are back with Maya, who asked, what direction do you think the show will go without your character? You're a phenomenal actor. Thank you for bringing this character to life in all of his complexities. Thank you very much for watching, Maya, and all of you. And it has been an amazing journey to go on with a complicated, beloved to me, and I know to all of you, man. Um, what direction the show will go, uh, I, I don't know, at the end of the episode, I, uh, as I say, I haven't watched this show in five years, but I saw, you know, Carrie get promised a job by someone who closed the door in her face, literally and metaphorically. Um, we see Dara Dahl kind of punished for actions that he actually wasn't necessarily a part of. Um, and Carrie facing Capitol Hill like that, to me suggested some kind of a political run. Um, she wasn't facing the White House, she was facing the House of Representatives and I I would uh, hazard a guess, not being inside the writer's room, that there's something about Carrie needing to get inside that 
close-knit circle of President Keane to be able to effect change. I'm not quite sure who's going to be watching her back from now on. Um, Max, I hope, and Maury, if you're out there, um, you can write in a question and um, it will be roundly ignored. Um, but do have a go, you know, um, you've not much else to do. So just keep on sending in the questions and we'll just keep skipping over them. Will said, you've done a fantastic job as Quinn. Thanks, Will. Growing with this character for the past five years, how hard was it to let him go? Um, I felt uh, it was a bittersweet moment for me because I, I have lived with this guy, as you say, for five years. And um, I, I do feel that his time had come and I'm, I never wanted Quinn to outstay his welcome. I was always a fan of John Cleese with his two seasons of Faulty Towers and Ricky Gervais who knew when to stop extras and the British version of The Office. They left us wanting more. They left us loving those shows and characters. They left us returning to them time after time. And I always found that an incredibly exciting way to do television as opposed to in some way overstaying your welcome. So um, I guess I feel that that probably, Quinn is probably in that camp. Um, Erica F. is asking, many people are creating theories about Quinn not being dead. How does that make you feel in terms that people won't let Quinn go because they love him so much? Um, well, you and me both. Not about the um, not being dead. I'm, I'm afraid that he, he is dead. But loving him so much is incredibly touching for me because all of you and, and I have been on this journey with this guy and we've followed him and loved him and screamed at the television or the script or our co-stars <laughs> and um, it's been quite a roller coaster. Um, I'm incredibly touched by the response of the fans this morning. Um, we've been unable to even keep up with the deluge of emotional and heartfelt responses from all of you which have been incredibly moving so thank you um jen with two n's asks did quen did quinn bleh, quinn also with two n's ever feel genuinely loved by carrie with two r's or did he love her because she herself was unable to really accept or feel love well well <sighs> That would be a hell of a pathology if he only um, felt things for her because she was unable to feel them for herself. It would give him something of a savior complex, which um, you could argue that he, that he had. Um, did Quinn feel loved by Carrie? I don't know. I mean, his incredibly badly judged advances were always spurned, um, oftentimes with good reading, with reason. You know, once at her father's... Uh, funeral and once incredibly um, inappropriately in her basement in this season. Um, whether Carrie is able to accept or feel love is a question for Carrie and, and maybe Claire can speak to that. Uh, but I think that they were initially drawn to each other because I'm afraid I think damage attracts damage sometimes and in the end Quinn had um, the desire to extricate himself from a life that wasn't serving him and and uh, Carrie seems to be keen on digging herself deeper into that. Um, Sharon asks, what does your wife Amy, that's weird because my wife is called Amy as well, think of your betrayal of Quinn post Berlin? Um, I would never presume to speak for my wife and I think you should ask her uh, at Amy Mullins. Margaret says, how do you feel about your character's ultimate sacrifice, especially given how President-elect Keane turned on Carrie and Saul at the end of the finale? There's no way for Quinn to have known anything about this woman. He's been out of the political loop the entire season. Um, he's not watching CNN, let's put it that way. And yeah, he's seen the placards and the protests, and but 
I, I don't think that Quinn had formulated an opinion about President-elect Keane. I also think that Quinn is a patriot and a soldier, and he would put America first. And beyond any kind of individualistic personality trait that he might or might not agree with, Quinn would respect the office of the President of the United States and protect that office at all costs, and that's what he did. Kristen um, says, how did you prepare to play Peter with brain damage? Seriously, bravo. Also, I'm sad now. Can I get a hug? This is what I think what that means is, I don't know what that means, actually. Kind of, um, oh, um, so can I get a hug? D down the line of Facebook Live, you've, there is a hug down the, down the thing. How did I prepare? Um, I, uh, preparation for things I don't necessarily always think is a good idea to discuss. Um, I sort of think that the magic lives in uh, that wonderful place where the great writing and um, direction and script and other actors all come together with the editing and the music and everything and there is a magic there that uh, I'm continually fascinated by and want to enjoy almost without knowing that the rabbit was under the table which the hat was on if that makes any sense. Mark wants to know was Quinn ultimately hailed as a hero? The six weeks between his death and the ending scenes leave a lot of questions. I agree, Mark. You know, there's a big old timeline gap for me, just as a, someone who watched along with you all yesterday, between this guy saving the life of the president, um, then elect, and of Carrie, and then sort of into the machinations of her presidency. I'm, um, I'm very interested to see the response of our characters to this guy's passing. You know, we've heard him say, I don't, don't put a star on the wall for me, or say some dumb speech, and I want to know, okay, so what do you do? What do you do when a friend and a colleague who you've loved, and who has, in some cases, saved your life more than once, dies. What do you say? Where do you go? What ceremony? Private, spiritual um, celebration do you have? And I, I would, would like to know that. So, I mean, you tell me or they'll tell us maybe next season. I'm, I don't know. Um, someone called Ma Ma Maori St Staling. Maori Staling. I don't know who that is. Maori Sterling asks, what was your favorite part about working with Maury Sterling? I think that's a troll, which is a <laughs> joke thing. I don't know who that is. So, next question. Uh, Emily, why do you think so many people felt, we should have to filter those because you're gonna get people writing in and they're just haters and I say, you know, you can't get no closer than that. <laughs> Why do you think so many people felt a profound connection to Quinn? Because he's awesome. And I think because he had um, a moral center that was good and uh, true in an outside that was incredibly badass. And that's an amazing combination. I don't think I know anyone like that particularly. I wish I did. I wish I could have given him a hug. I know a lot of you guys probably feel the same way. or at least bought him a beer or sent him tickets to a beach holiday, something. I just feel like the guy really needed a break. Um, and I'm, I'm sad he didn't get that. You know the end of the Shawshank Redemption when he swims through a river of um, excrement and uh, ends up with that wonderful dream of um, repairing a boat on a beach? That would have been quite something. And then I imagine this sort of um, plane lands and you know, Carrie gets off, the, comes down the steps, and he's just like, no, <laughs> leave me alone. I'm finally, finally not about to die. Anyway, uh, Amy, with a Y, says, do you wish he and Carrie would ever have admitted their feelings? By the end, has he forgiven her for waking him up? 
Uh, I don't know. Can, can you? I don't know. Um, what reparations has she made? What forgiveness has she asked for? And um, has she really come to terms with the effects of what she did? Is there accountability for that? Um, until that happens, I'm not really sure that any kind of true bond can be formed. Um, there is this moment, um, we've got another clip, which we can throw up in a second, but this Carrie Quinn moment where um, Quinn seems to claim that he's always been the way that he is and that there's a sort of inherent darkness. And in a way, you could read that as him exonerating Carrie. Um, and again, over to you, but um, let's have a look at the clip. So, um, yeah, I think best haircut ever in television or film since, um, what was the one, the Coen Brothers one, uh, with, um, you know, Anton with the, with that amazing hair. No Country for Old Men. Yeah. That was the first best haircut, in the best in the not best sense of the word best. Uh, all right, so Alex, which may be Alex Ganza, I don't know. No, maybe not. Rupert, he says, you did an amazing job this season. You deserve an award for playing Quinn. Wow, thank you. What was the hardest part about being him this season? Um, I think the hardest part was, was having to watch him go through so much um, spiritually and psychologically, as well as I think physically he's pretty used to being put through the ringer, but the the fact that you know he inadvertently caused Astrid's death through um, his own misreading again misreading of a of a scenario is so tragic and so preventable and so heartbreaking and I really felt for him. Uh, Melissa would like to know or asks. Obviously, no one is safe on this show. Do you think Carrie will make it out alive? Or meet the same fate as Brody and Quinn. Um, well, you're right. It's a show with um, there's a lot of red dots on a lot of people's backs. Um, but I, 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 it's Car it's Claire's show. You know, it's this is uh, a show about Carrie Matheson and the world she moves in and the people she influences and is influenced by. Um, and I would never presume to speak for how the writers are going to arc her character. Suffice it to say that she'll be there th throughout is my, I'd put my money there. Uh, Grace wants to know if I will pay for her therapy because she's traumatized from losing my favorite character. Um, I, I think there's probably a form of replacement therapy, um, Grace. Uh, I, my personal, I, if I may be cod psychiatrist for a moment, I think you should find a, a, a beautiful river with a big tree with a strong bow and make a rope swing and uh, go and swing and jump into the water on a warm day. That's my advice. Psych, psyche Dean? Psych Dean. Psych Dean, who's the Dean of all the psychs. How would you describe your character's inner conflict about his personal journey and ultimate limitations? Um, I don't believe in limitations. Uh, Quinn doesn't, didn't either. And I don't see any um, difference in physicality or mental ability or psychiatric agility as being an impediment to anything. So um, I think his conflicts were moral and I don't think that they had anything to do with uh, the state in which he found himself upon being rudely awoken from a coma. Courtney C says, what was your favorite moment as Peter Quinn? Wow, in the whole five years? Well, what was yours? Is there a way we can poll it, see what people kind of actual, I'd love to know. In the whole five seasons, is there one scene, one moment, a line? Um, I'd love to know from all of you if there is a favorite moment in the whole of Peter Quinn's journey, seasons two through six, that you have. And maybe there's a way that the magical, clever people can um, do, do this, 
you're saying do this. It's about one of them. Um, and we'll do a poll or something and find out because it would be cool to know. I'd love to know. Eliza or Elisa, has Quinn's story ever brought you to tears while reading the script or filming a scene? I've done a fair bit of crying over it. Um, yeah, many times, many times. As I say, it's the there was something this season particularly about the idea that this guy's perception of reality has been so altered that um, his misreading of a very prosaic scenario gets him into such awful trouble and it's not his fault. I found that heartbreaking, the, the idea that he thinks a comforting moment is a sexual moment or he thinks that um, a woman who's trying to care for him is thre a threat to him and he gets it wrong so often and yet the wonderful thing as we've now seen is that he was right all along about the, uh, the very actual threat um, of P. P. Belli. CJ asks, I read that you wrote the letter for the season finale and it was not read by any of the cast beforehand and Claire Dane's reaction was a first take as she was responding to what you wrote. Is that true? Yes, it is. All of that is true. Well, well researched. Um, Alex Ganza uh, called me and said, he said, listen, we are balls to the wall on this and I am a little out of time, he said, and I really would love it if you would consider writing the letter. And I remember I was on an aeroplane, just getting onto an aeroplane as I took the call, and I said, sure, and I sat down on the aeroplane to write it and it came in a big, uh, in one go. Um, and we then, Leslie Linkerglatter, the director of the episode, and Alex and myself, went into a small side room in this abandoned hospital in Berlin, and the sound man set up old mattresses, kind of second hand, which is always a bit, anyway, old second hand mattresses to make a kind of soundproof booth. And I sat in the little booth makeshift and, and read it. and. We were all in tears. There was something incredibly true uh, and tragic about this uh, moment. And then, yeah, they, they then played it on the um, speakers while Claire was doing the scene. And, and what you see is, what, is how she responded. Favorite fan moments of my, oh, brilliant. Okay, so this is now you guys all saying what your favorite bits are. This is great, because I think you're far more qualified to, you know, seeing as I haven't actually seen it, which is the favorite. So Suzanne Houston or Houston, depending if you're a New Yorker or a Texan, says her favorite scene is when he saved Carrie from the car where the diplomat was beaten to death. That's right, that was with Corey Stoll, who's a wonderful actor, and they, the amazing set designers had dressed um, South Africa to look like um, Kabul, I think. Um, and it was incredible what they did. And um, uh, we had to, yeah, then sort of shoot a drive a car backwards. And it was, uh, there's been some amazing driving I've gotten to do, you know, a lot of fishtailing and burning rubber and driving ridiculously fast. Um, so m more of your favorite moments. Uh, Fani says, my favorite was when Quinn and Carrie meet. Your very first scene ever of Quinn was the very first scene ever that I ever did. And it was also the scene with which I auditioned for the part more than seven times via videotape from England. And that was the first day that I was watching this show in England and then stepped onto the set and suddenly was, it, was in it. Um, Jan or Jan St. Wolfer says, I liked your scene when you were in the pool at your, at your apartment with your neighbor when Quinn was drunk. Um, tying one on and just wanting to lose himself and um, yeah that was I think also South Africa and I think we've seen Quinn wrestle with substance abuse um, a lot and um, we've seen him you know in this season as well having struggling with drink and drugs and I was glad that that wasn't his end. Uh, more of your favorite moments when Quinn said to Estes, nothing happens to Brody or I'll be back up in this room because I'm a guy that kills bad guys. Yeah, that's an amazing line and it really stuck. And I know for a lot of you guys, there's a, there's a resonance there that people wanted Quinn to go, sort of take out Da and to save the day. And I, I do, uh, again, I applaud the, sh the, the writers and the showrunners' um, courage in 
not necessarily having the ultimate heroic ending, you know, because the day doesn't always get saved and heroes die too. Um, Christina's favorite part um, was how Quinn always had Carrie's back no matter what, including taking care of Franny. Now I know some of you are keen to set up the Quinn babysitting company, um, but that is probably against most state laws, that, that particular style of childcare. And um, I would uh, advocate that you uh, do not follow Quinn's example in um, maintaining the safety of your home. Um, Debbie says, every episode and scene with Quinn in it was my favorite. Well, thank you very much, Debbie. They were the only ones that I was in. <laughs> Akshendra says, my favorite moment was this season when Quinn throws the journalist out of the house. Well, that's, that's um, an awkward one because I don't think he meant to throw her out of the house such that she fell down the stairs and hurt herself. Again, I think that was a, a mistake and he didn't see that she had high heels and the high heels caught on the steps and he perhaps didn't know his own strength in that moment, but there was a the deep um, remorse from, from him uh, after that for sure. Uh, Question slash favorite part combo from Lisa, who's squeezing in a two-in-one here. Was the acting like a monkey scene in the script, or was it improvised? You did it brilliantly. And Lara commented that the monkey scene was her favorite because it demonstrates Rupert's stellar acting. Thank you both very much. Um, it was in the script, but there's this. there was a joke with one of the writers, Chip um, Johansson, who, who said... Sometimes we just put things in there to see if you'll do them, and we're always um, kind of surprised and um, very glad that you always do. Whatever we put in there, you do it and you believe it, which is, yes, that's true. And it did literally say, then Quinn, you know, turns into a monkey and says, who, 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 who. That was what it said in the script. And um, I remember that we did it and Seath Mann was directing, who's wonderful. And, uh, and it was Claire and myself and Claire, just classic Claire, just eyebrows like, okay. <laughs> um, Teresa says, my favorite moment was when Quinn asked Carrie to leave with him after her father's funeral. Showed his humanity and vulnerability within that impenetrable armor. Yeah, I mean, that armor has been one of the fascinating things, I think, for the writers and myself to, um, by turns, shore up and galvanize, as well as um, to pierce and to allow cracks in. So, well observed. Um, I'm amazed that Maury Sterling didn't write a question. It's weird. Um, but unfortunately, we only have time for one more. So, sorry for that. Guess he had other things to do. Can't imagine what. Brendan says, Rupert, you put Brendan as my father-in-law's name. This may be him. Rupert, you I don't know if he's ever used Facebook. Probably not. Rupert, you pulled off a legendary performance this season. In the awful event that Peter Quinn is really gone, where can we find you next? Um, I'm a big believer in letting the tide go out so that you can let it come back in rather than just continually stacking task upon task and achievement and accomplishment and diary filling things. So I'm more interested in being available and open to curiosity and to being uh, really present than I am in constantly striving for the next thing. So um, you'll, you'll know when I do. Um, all right, well, I think that may be the end so uh, I would, oh, I didn't show any of these things. All right, well, just do a few. Okay, there we go. Um, <laughs> but um, no, seriously, I just want to thank you all so much for watching uh, Homeland and being part of the journey with myself, of Peter Quinn. You've been there with him every step of the way, just as I have, and we've certainly felt it at home, all your love and support. So thank you and Goodbye.